Hello everyone, welcome back to Clementine Creative. My name is Clementine and I'm back with another uh, tutorial video. This week we're gonna tackle something different. We're not going to be doing characters. Also, we're not gonna do half-assed tutor uh, theory tutorial videos. I'm going to try to teach you uh, how to get into digital painting. Um, sadly, I cannot teach you how to digitally paint. It's something that basically comes with a lot of practice. Uh, but I can help you get into it. I can help you give you some uh, basics that which you know which you can follow and uh, develop your own style. And you know through time, through hard work, basically learn how to properly paint. Um, digital painting is something that I've struggled a lot uh, when I started out. It was you know digital painting or any kind of painting is different than drawing uh, because you're not drawing lines. You're applying light and everything you know everything you've known that thus far you know just being drawing all these years it gets crushed uh, because suddenly you know painting is so much different uh, hopefully this video will go the way I imagine it uh, I will be uh, drinking my coffee while while I uh, record so it's gonna be very unprofessional but um, you know just trying to feel as comfortable as possible um, you might hear background noises, try to ignore those. Uh, this is all real time. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to explain how I kind of imagined this um, unraveling. So, uh, as you're seeing before you right now, we have this uh, uh, on screen, you're seeing this, um, I guess, table of something. You know, uh, I'm not sure how you would call this, at least not in English. Um, but basically it kind of looks like something that you would find in a video game, almost like a skill tree. Uh, so what we see in front of us is that we have tier 1, uh, tier 2, and tier 3. Uh, and each tier has its own difficulty and its own theme. Now, tier 3 does not necessarily mean the hardest difficulty, uh, but it does have different things that we're going to talk about in it. Um, I guess the biggest step would be going from tier 1 to tier 2. Uh, because we're gonna take a uh, complex shape and we're gonna try to, you know, paint it. So let's leave everything else and let's go with tier one. So uh, I'm going to move on onto my working uh, canvas and we're gonna take a look at some of the things we're gonna talk about. Right. So here we are. Um, this is my working canvas. This is where we where we will be doing most of the practical work. So let's talk about what we're gonna be, um, I guess, you know, trying to learn in tier one. Tier one being the easiest level uh, does not necessarily mean it's the easiest to overcome. Tier one is the basics, uh, and with tier one, uh, you're gonna learn some fundamentals that will definitely help you when you are painting. These are the things you need to actively think about, at least when you start out. Um, when you're painting so let's you know let's get into this um, and let's go with point one which is line art uh, so here we have written uh, let me just okay there we go uh, we have written line art or you know there's no slash or anything but line art or 3d visualization um, what this means is everything begins with a line art uh, not necessarily you don't have to but when you're starting out everything should begin with a line art uh, it'll definitely help you because you'll get to see the shape and uh, we'll soon see what I'm talking about. So the first part or the first step into digital painting is being able to, s to visualize a certain shape in uh, 3D space with lines. So line art is something that you're going to have to know how to do. But it doesn't have to be beautiful line art. The most important part here is that you're able to see things and draw things in 3D. Uh, let's take a very, you know, very, very basic example here that you know how to draw a cube in 3D space. So let's just, I'm going to sketch uh, while I explain. There, you know, therefore we'll have a better <coughs> visual representation of what I'm trying to say. Um, so let's say that you have no idea how to draw a, a cube. This is how you would draw a square, right? Now what we need to do, what you are, you have to be capable of doing is seeing a cube in three-dimensional space, which means being able to draw it as a 3D object, um, basically creating the illusion that there is a 3D object. Here we go. When you're able to do this, 
you've already you know you already progressed through the first step so step one is already completed if you're able to draw things in 3d space this is usually very easy you know these are the things that after a couple of years of drawing you'll be able to do you know uh, things like drawing I guess a very example a very simple example let's say a face right we have a face and we're gonna draw this face in a in a sort of a uh, tilted downwards view right so here we have you need to be able to see things in 3d you know how they would look like um, once you're done with that that's the first step because when you start out uh, you're gonna or at least it's recommended that you basically draw things out before you actually start to paint them it's gonna be much easier so after we're done with that after we learn how to visualize things in 3d space and we know how to draw it out um, we, we move on to the next step which is grayscale uh, grayscale is what you see right here obviously right now it's uh, this is more of an icon or a symbol version of it but <clears throat> uh, we're gonna also talk about a grayscale uh, which is gonna show us values values is something I've talked about before and it's basically the dark, you know black going towards white you know so black slowly converting to white we have black dark gray like really dark gray dark gray uh, just gray light gray very light gray and white so that is the grayscale, and in grayscale we have hidden values. Uh, values is what creates 3D space, is how people see things in 3D. Um, and when you're shutting out, it's recommended that you, that you don't paint in color, but paint in black and white. Uh, so we're going to be talking about painting in black and white values and how grayscale is the most important part of digital painting, or any kind of painting really, anything in 3D values is very important. Uh, if you have Google SketchUp and you make um, a square, or not a square, a cube, uh, you see different shades of gray, which represents shadows and different planes. You know, one is has more light on it than the other, and that's how you're able to see it as a three-dimensional object. That's what we're talking about. So let's move on to the next uh, step, which is simple shape shading. So uh, this is where we'll do the actual practical work. Uh, simple shape shading is SSS. <laughs> no, uh, but <clears throat> it's uh, basically going to be we're going to take a cube and a sphere. Uh, these are the two main shapes, I would say. And we're going to, you know, give them a basic coat of shading. So, um, very basic, no really fine shading or any kind of uh, tricks or whatever just very simple basic shading that way you will get the, the basic idea of what it means to apply a light instead of drawing lines that is very important and that's like one of the more important parts uh, this is definitely the most important part in tier one is basic shape uh, sh uh, basic um, you know shading and the next step is advanced uh, shape shading uh, a little bit uh, simple shape shading but advance so what we have here is we're gonna take whatever we've done in the basic and we're gonna apply some more uh, I guess more theory to it uh, you know something like more light different you know uh, different shades of gray uh, you know shadow isn't you know it's not dark gray on one side it's you know usually uh, light bounces all over the place so it's not shaded the same all, the, all over the, uh, the cube or the sphere. So we're gonna, you know, bring it up. So that's tier one, this is what we'll be doing. Let's just go with line art uh, or 3D visualization and this is where we'll start our tutorial. Now before we start, I just wanna say one thing. Um, these videos are going to be relatively long. Uh, theory is something that's very hard to teach in a um, short period of time. It, it's something that takes a long time to learn, uh, years even, you know, not just hours, years. It takes years to learn. And uh, trying to put this in a very short video is impossible, uh, definitely impossible. But I'm going to try to do as much as possible in one video really fast. So, first we have 3D visualization. We have a cube and a sphere. Now, the sphere is basically just a circle, so we don't have to stress that, that one uh, that much. But if we do talk a little bit about how we can 
I guess see it in 3D space is one thing that can help us is to draw a um, a line that's kind of curved uh, and that gives us information of the surface right information of the surface right here so this thing already looks like it's more 3D than it, than it looked before uh, so that's why the sphere uh, the, the cube is quite self-explanatory we already see it in 3D space uh, uh, nothing we don't have to do anything else um, when you're able to, to, to see things in 3D space um, a lot of the, you know it's not just drawing so when you're digitally painting you have to sometimes think how would light hit this certain area and how would this area show up uh, this is something that it's a lot of it is just observation of things in nature or just you know how shadow or how light works uh, a lot of it is also theory just uh, observe your surroundings see how light acts on certain objects uh, on certain shapes and then you can apply this to your uh, painting so here we go this is 3d visualization very simple basically the point of this one is you want to draw out everything before you have a scene let's say we do another quick sketch um, right we have a canvas or whatever let's move it down here um, and before you start putting all those strokes up there because the first thing that's gonna happen is uh, when you're gonna begin and you're gonna try to paint something uh, what's gonna happen is it's gonna suck and you're not gonna be able to put out anything you're gonna look at professional you're gonna look at a video from someone who knows how to paint and then you're gonna be thinking to yourself wow this is awesome I want to do it on my own and you're gonna start doing it and you're gonna realize, uh, you're gonna be thinking, what's going on? Where's the painting? It happened for that guy. Where's mine? Um, <laughs> the thing is, you don't have the, you know, the, uh, you don't have the knowledge, and you don't have the experience that the professionals have, which is something that everybody start, everybody starts off, you know, clean. They, nobody is born with super understanding of 3d space that's something that is learned over time even especially when you do things that's how you learn it. Uh, don't worry about it everybody starts fresh so don't just start putting on paint strokes and try to find shapes and things because that's how professionals do it you don't want to do it that way you want to you know want to sketch everything out um sorry this is a little bit boring right now but this is all you need to sketch everything out let's say you're drawing characters uh, sketch them out before you do anything always when you watch my videos you always see me sketching things out it helps it really does help so sketch things out visualize first get it down in lines Bef when you get it down in lines and you know it's nice then that's when you want to apply paint afterwards so we've done this we know what 3d visualization is let's sum it up it's seeing things that we're gonna paint uh, in 3d space but in lines uh, we've, we've done the first step, the line art, if you know how to do this, basically you're done. So this is something that you probably already know how to do and that's why you decided to go on digital painting. So the next step is learning the grayscale and how values work. So let's move on to that. Alright, so right now in front of us we have something that is called the grayscale. Um, as we see here, we have white right here and we have black. And then in between we have all sorts of shades of gray. Just these are just shades of gray. Fifty shades of gray. No, <laughs> but seriously, sh shades of gray. So we have that. And I wrote Gary. What did, what did I write there? <laughs> what did I write there? There we go. Shades of gray. Um, and as you can see, it goes from the lightest color, which is the white, to black. And grayscale is very, very important in painting because these are the values. So white, as we see it, has the most light in 3D space. No, you know, uh, platforms, let's say we have a cube, all right? Everything, we're going to be talking about cubes today. So the lightest surface of the cube, let's say it has this shade of gray, the second one, this one. Or I guess this is the first gray shade. Um, that means that part is the lightest the one that has the darkest let's say this one right here that means this is the darkest part and that's that already creates 3d if we look at this these things kind of look like stairs you know and the stairs are slowly fading away um and if you look at it from the top here right 
and we go down to the bottom it looks like the stairs are going downwards into a cellar of some sort um, that's all already values working that's already you know eyes are already, or the brain is being tricked into thinking that there's something three-dimensional there but there's not it's really just an illusion of 3d space to sum it up what grayscale is grayscale is you know going from black to white or you know up opposite so from black to white or to white to black and we have all those shades of gray and those shades of gray will form our 3d space so now that we got those down we now know what line art is we know how to visualize things in line art in 3d space now we also know what values are we know that the darkest means the darkest area the lightest means where there's going to be the most light now i'm going to try to teach you how you can apply this to simple shapes first so we're going to move on onto digitally painting a cube and a sphere so let's go to that all right so here we are we have the cube and the sphere just like the ones we saw before except what we're going to do now is we're going to paint them it's going to be uh, your first step in this tutorial in digital painting if you follow this you should end up with a digital painting of a cube all right i'm going to go with the second you know second shade of gray and this is the top is going to be the lightest part of the cube the light is, is coming from above we also need to think where the light is coming from in digital painting is very important uh, or any painting so whenever i say digital painting i obviously mean any kind of painting so in painting is very important that you know where your light source is because that you know that really just uh, defines where the light is going to be um, in our case let me just actually draw it right before I do anything let me draw it our light source I'm gonna go with this uh, golden color up here our light source uh, is here so I'm gonna draw a light bulb Hopefully you're understanding everything so far. I know it's a little bit complicated, but um, hopefully I'll be able to teach you everything. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select different, uh, I guess, surfaces of this cube. And I'm going to explain what type of shade goes in there. And then on the sphere, I'm going to show you a technique that I use when I digitally paint uh, on how to create things, you know, in 3D. You know, how to make things look like they're three-dimensional. Three All right. First, let's go into the whole theoretical. Well, how does the light work? So light is, you know, it comes from above and it bounces all over the place. And because of light, we also have shadow. Shadows is where light does not reach. Uh, in our case, the bottom part of this cube is almost like completely dark. Almost. Not completely dark, but almost completely dark because a very small amount of light comes there. So what we're going to do now... I'm going to select the top surface, which is the closest to the light or, you know, has the most, the most light is going to fall on it. And I'm going to paint it um, in this shade of gray, right? So we already have the top done. If you follow along and you drew it or you painted this, you're already uh, a step into digital painting. The next platform we're going to select is this one right here. It's facing towards the sphere. Um, this one is going to be a different shade of gray because it's not getting as much light as the top one the top one is getting the most light so it's very bright that means if this one doesn't get as much light it means it's going to be darker right so we take a darker shade of gray something like this and we put it in there so here we go we have that and now the last piece you know the last piece of the cube is to color in the darkest area which in this case you can decide which one you want to have to be the darkest um, I'm gonna decide this one to be the darkest but we don't want to make it like a million times darker just a little bit uh, because it's it's more or less receiving the same amount of light as that one uh, right here so we did this now you see this cube is literally now done. It's digitally painted. It looks like it's in three. It's three D. Let me just uh, fix a couple of these black edges, uh, get rid of them, and while I do that, I'm going to explain just what happened. So, what we did here is we made an illusion on this piece of canvas here, um, an illusion of something that is three D. You know, our brain now thinks that there's a three-dimensional object standing right in front of us. 
While we know that that's not true, this is still a 2D thing. However, we created an illusion that this object in front of us is um, 3D. Now, how do we know it's not actually 3D? If you touch your screen and it's flat where the square is, that means it's not 3D. It means it's, uh, you know, it's 2D. However, you create an illusion because you used your theoretical skills or theoretical knowledge on how to create three-dimensional, you know, things. So, if you completed this far, if you came this far, you, you made this cube, you already did a part, you already learned a little bit about digital painting. So, remember, whatever light, it, like, whatever surface is the closest to the light gets the most light. Makes sense. So that means it's going to be the lightest. It's going to have the lightest shade of gray. It's going to be almost white if it's, like, really close to the, to the light. And the, the, the area furthest away, the one that's getting the least light, is going to be the darkest. So now we have that, now we're going to do the sphere. And I'm going to show you, uh, with the sphere, a technique that you see me use in my videos all the time. Alright, I'm going to basically do this. So what I just did is I colored in the sphere the darkest shade I want it to be. So this is the darkest color on this piece. This shade of gray that you just saw me apply is going to be the darkest shade of gray on this entire sphere. And now what we just do, we take the brightest color, which in my case is going to be the one that we used on the cube, and we simply start applying light. As we all know, light is coming from above, so we can, we can see that there's this thing here. We have a light bulb. Uh, the light bulb is here, which means we will receive the most light here on the top, right right here. This is where the light will come. So now that we know all of this, all we have to do is apply it. So all the time when you see me rendering some piece out, you always see me coloring it one shade of gray, or even if it's green, if you put it into black and white, it's still going to be, you know, gray. Um, you see me applying one shade of gray, like the darkest color that I want there to be, more or less always the darkest color, and then I start applying light afterwards, making it look three-dimensional. So I'm going to show the process. This is the same process I would use to create any other surface in any painting. So I have the darkest color, like which is my shadows. Now I just need to apply light. We know where the light is coming from. It's coming from above, so now we just want to light it up. Um, I have the opacity of the of the brush set to to 30, so we don't get as much pressure when we're doing this. So we can get you know different shades, different shades of um, of gray. So all the way to the top, the more it comes to the top, the brighter it's going to be. We also make us. It's also going to be smaller. Light is always going to be concentrated. So here we go. Make it a we can expand that a little bit. And we can also add a little lighter color, like number one. And just apply it. There we go. And we literally created a 3D sphere. It's very easy. You take the darkest shade of gray. That is going to be your darkest color. That is going to be your shadows. And then you apply the lightest on top. Um, of course, you have an opacity setting, so you're able to layer that color, and the more you put on one spot, the lighter it's going to get. And then you get 3D. You get something that's three-dimensional. So, I know this was a little bit difficult. Hopefully, it made some sense. Now, I'm going to try to take this to the next level, make some advanced shading. And hopefully, by the end of this video, uh, you'll know how to at least paint a cube and a, uh, a, cube and a sphere. Remember that everything is created through these shapes, so you can apply these principles to literally anything else. Now I'm gonna just move on to the advanced shading and we're gonna take a look at what's gonna be happening there. Okay, so here we are, advanced shading. Uh, let me just take a sip of my coffee. I'm sorry, very unprofessional, but um, you, you need that coffee. Alright, so, what is advanced shading all about? Well, advanced shading is uh, we're gonna take a look at what happens when light bounces so there's a thing called light bouncing light um, which if you think about it it will make all the sense in the world now let's pretend that this cube is in on a white piece of paper and I'm just gonna draw the piece of paper 
There we go. I'm gonna draw it out. Yep. All right. So wanna be right? Doesn't have to be 100% correct. Um, it's on a white piece of paper. So what happens with the light? Let's say it, you know the light goes like this. Uh, where we all know that the light shines in all directions but let's for the sake of this video pretend it only goes down like so what happens is that light also hits this area now this is a bright area and because of this bright area light is being bounced backwards like this so it's uh, being bounced into different surfaces that's how we get you know uh, different sh you know different you know, lighter shadows and things like that so light bounces all around you know it just bounces from this white piece of paper into this object right and it's only natural you're seeing uh, whenever you let's say you have a flashlight and you and you aim that flashlight on let's say a white piece of paper because the paper is so white it'll bounce back uh, the, the light and it'll light up something that like let's say you have an arm it's gonna light it up from the bottom just because you know the, the light basically just bounces off so what we're gonna do now was we're gonna advance this shading uh, it's not gonna be that difficult don't worry about it so we take the lightest color which is white so we all know that when you have a you know an object under the light it's not let's say a cube is not shaded the way we have a shaded now this is very basic you know very simple um, because light hits some areas stronger than the others so now let's try to do this on our uh, example right here so let me delete all the all the crappy drawings that we have around here a huge amount of light is being captured here just because that's where the light bulb is so this is where we will have most of the light but we want to make it fade out you know let's fade it out uh, because it you know it fades out it's not the same everywhere else because the only area that the light is so strong is there. Uh, pretty not, pretty basic. Why? Because you know that's where the light bulb is. So that area is lighter, and this area is actually a little bit darker, right? So just a, a tiny bit, not too much. All right, we just throw that in. Um, then we have. Let's move on, just like we did before, on this platform right here. We take a light color now on the top it's obviously going to be lighter than on the bottom because light is coming from top to bottom which means this area gets more light so we want to light this up a little bit not too much just a little bit and we're just gonna blend this out like so there we go again the reason why this is happening is because light comes from top to bottom and the surface on the top gets hit more than the surface on the bottom which also means we need to darken this area up a little bit so here we go we darken it up a little bit and now the last piece or the last platform here is this one right here so again we light it up but we want to make sure it's not the same shade we don't want it to be the same shade because then it gets very uh, difficult to recognize which um, it's very hard to distinguish different shapes from each other. So again, most you know most of the light is going to be up here because you know it's closer to the light bulb, and the light bulb being the light source. The light source can also be the sun. Uh, that is basically the <laughs> the biggest light source. So here we go. More light on the top, and then we have more dark on the bottom. Here we go. We throw that in, and there it is. Uh, it looks much better than it did, than it did before. Let me just um, so it looks a lot better than it did before. It already looks a little bit more three D. Uh, I'm just gonna tweak it out a little bit more. So we take the white color, and light tends to kind of stick to the edges a little bit more than everywhere else. Everywhere else. So what we'll do is we're going to take a light, very light color, which in my case is white, and we're just going to pull it like so. I want to make sure. There we go. Light is going to get kind of stuck here, and it's also going to get stuck here. I have to turn the canvas a little bit to get this angle, and also downwards a little bit.
There we go. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more white on the top one. All right, there we go. A little bit more. A little bit brighter here. A bit brighter here. There we go. And here we have a cube, a rather nice cube. Uh, what we can also do now is we take a soft brush and we add a little bit more darkness to all the bottom parts here, right? So let's just do that. Add a little bit more darkness. There we go. And there we, there we have it. It's done. One more thing that we want to do is also add a little bit of bounce light. Light is going to bounce and it's going to show up. So what we do is make this area slightly, not too much, but no, slightly brighter. Just like that. Just very slightly. But it is there, uh, because that's how it works. And the last thing, last but not least, we need to add the shadow, right? The shadow that the cube releases. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to select the cube, and I'm going to select it inverse. It's going to be much easier this way. And we're just going to draw the shadow not too far away from the actual cube because the cube is very close to the ground which also means that the shadow is going to be very strong already there you know so here we go there's the shadow there and this is basically the shadow that happens when we kind of we want to ground this the entire thing so it looks like it's on the ground it's standing somewhere There we go. And we have that. So now what I'm basically going to do is uh, I'm also going to finish. I'm going to show you how to do the sphere. And then we're going to compare the, uh, I guess, the advanced shading versus the basic shading. So let's move on to the sphere. So the same as before, light, we're going to, for the sake of this video, say that the light moves like so. Now, that's how it falls. It falls down kind of like rain. So what happens is it bounces upwards from the paper. Let's say that this sphere is also on a piece of paper. It bounces upwards. So what we want to do now is want to make sure that we get that bounce light in there. That is very important. The bounce light makes everything look uh, a lot more realistic because, you know, that's what happens in real life. So let's try to do that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take white color and we're just going to apply it right here, more or less on the top. This area is the closest. This area has the most light in it, right? Kind of almost like a reflection, you know, flares, whatever. And we, we add a little bit of dark color on the back there. So we still want to light it up nicely. There we go. So the next step is to add bounce light. Uh, as we saw before, light bounces from the bottom and it, get, and it hits the ball right here. So we add that in. See how it's getting now brighter, um, and but there is still this, I guess, um, I guess this stripe of darkness right here, and this right here on the bottom is the bounce light. Very important. Bounce light is you know is the most visible even on a sphere. That's where it's visible the most. And now that we've lit up the top of the sphere, we've created a bounce light on the bottom of the sphere. The last thing we need to do is to create the shadow. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this uh, in Photoshop. There's a lot of ways, but I'm just going to show you the more traditional way of doing it, just directly painting it in. We take a dark color. Let me just delete this grayscale here because we no longer need it, so it doesn't uh, bother us. Let me do this. Butter. I always keep saying butter, like instead of bother, I say butter. Um, so here we go. Now we're going to drop in the shadow. Uh, we need to realize that the shadow, since the light does fall kind of like so, I'm going to show you. So the light falls like so, and if we now think of it as rain, um, that's where the shadow, shadows need to go like so. That's all where the shadow is going to be. Um, it's not going to be just down here, but it needs the bottom, because unlike a, you know, a box is, has all the same size 
and that's why the shadow is also the same size as the, the entire thing. But the ball is a little bit tricky because at first you might think, oh, it's just down here, but it's not. It's all over the place because, you know, all of this, you know, this area here, oh, this area here, the one that I'm going to color in black now, all of this is covering up. It's basically preventing light to hit the, I guess, the paper or the bottom. So we're not throwing it very lightly. Just like so, right? All over the place. And then we start to concentrate it more in the middle. We want to make sure that the bottom is in fact darker than the bounce light that it's, you know, that it's being created. So here we go. Add more shadow. There we go. And you have a ball on the ground. So yeah, this is the advanced shading and this is where it stops. So if you've come this far, that means you've successfully painted a cube and a sphere. You should be very proud of yourself because when I started this, you know, these are the things that I, could, I couldn't do. Um, and hopefully I helped you get a better idea of what digital painting is all about. I really hope that I, you know, that I did help you. Um, these this thing is very difficult to teach. It's a lot of practice and I really hope that I got to explain it the way I wanted it to. I, I hope that you understood it and if, if you don't understand something, please just comment below. But now let's take a look at uh, how the simple shading competes against the advanced shading here. So let's move on to that. Okay, so here we are, we see, you know, side by side compared the, the basic, I guess, shading, which is, you know, basic, but we can already see things in 3D. And then we have, of course, the more advanced one where we add bounce light, we add the shadows, and, you know, really work on the lighting where the light is stuck most and where, uh, light, you know, the object is being hit by the light less. Um, so I really, really, really hope that you came this far, uh, that you were able to, you know, paint what I have. If you have any questions, please do not be afraid. Uh, I will gladly answer them and even do different videos. So we have two more videos coming up uh, for this theme. But let's open up our little tier bar or whatever we had before and let's see all the things we got through. So here we have the objectives, I guess, for tier one. We could, you know, now we're gonna take a look at all the things we did and see if we completed them or not. So line art or 3D visualization, we've talked about that. Uh, and I'm pretty sure if you decided to do digital painting, you more or less already know about this. So this is this is a check. Um, the next one we have is grayscale. We talked about grayscale. We talked about how you know, black and white create different values and different surfaces, and we also saw this in practice later on. So we've definitely, definitely nailed that one. We completed it. So then we come to simple shape shading. Uh, we took two simple shapes, which is the cube and the sphere, which are the two basic shapes for everything else that is created later on, and the other shape. Uh, and we painted them. Very simple, basic shading. So hopefully it was easy to understand and that you were able to learn how to actually, you know, shade a simple uh, shape, like a cube or a sphere. That, that's step one in, in a long run of doing digital painting. And the more you're going to practice, the easier this is going to become. Um, you know, shading this, I guess, cube and sphere is so easy for me right now. But when I started, I'm not joking, I couldn't do that. It was very difficult. So for the basic shading, we can say that we totally did it. Um, then we have complex shading, you know, um, or I guess advanced shading. We showed how to do that um, by adding bounce light, by adding lighter areas on top, and showing that on certain edges, like a cube, uh, light is there, you know, stuck there a little bit more. And we try to, you know, show that on the actual painting. Hopefully, you'll be able to upgrade your shading from basic to advanced. If not, all you have to do is practice, and with time, you're surely to get it right. And I think we've nailed this one as well. Um, overall, tier one is complete. If you've come this far, if you're able, if you were able to paint the cube and the sphere, you nailed tier one, and you are ready to move on to tier two, which is going to be digitally painting an arm, like a muscled arm. Muscles have a lot of different shapes to them, so we're gonna explore that in the next video. Again, I hope this video helped you out. If you have any more questions on digital painting or shading, you know values. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to comment in the comment section below or ask me on DeviantArt. I have all those links on my 
uh, YouTube page, but I don't want to spam you. It doesn't really matter. So I hope you learned how to get into digital painting, what's important. I hope you learned about values and how important they are. And hopefully you learned, you know, what I was trying to teach you today is how to paint a cube in a sphere. It's, it's a beginning, but you'll get there with practice. Um, the next video is going to come out tomorrow. This is going to be a... Um, I guess a kind of course like a weekend course so you know the the day you're watching this or the day this video comes out is Friday tomorrow is gonna be Saturday and then on Sunday we'll have tier 3 uh, so again tomorrow is gonna be tier 2 we're gonna be doing the arm we're gonna take it up you know take it up a notch and hopefully learn again I guess I'll see you tomorrow in the next one bye now we have only about a minute of footage left a minute of footage left so while this minute is still happening, uh, hopefully it is one minute,